Hello, this is Vince Omega, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to compress the video down using Virtual Dub. Now, Virtual Dub is actually a tool, tool that I use to um, compress um, my Dungeon Fighter videos down, in case you didn't know. And I'm going to show you basically how it works. Now, you may also see something in the back called um, Audacity. I'm using this to record to actually the audio for this video. Because for some reason Cam Studio doesn't record audio off my um, off my new microphone, which is basically I'm using like a um, the microphone I'm using is the type that's used in like um, radio stations and stuff. Before I was recording, like when you heard my voice, I was using the um, the cheap USB microphones that you use to Skype with. But this is actually like a professional mic that I'm using right now, so. For some reason, it doesn't record off it, but enough griping about that. Um, this is virtual dub. Now, when you hit edit, you get um, you get certain um, options like open video file, reopen video file, append API segment, etc. Opening up a video file will allow you to choose the video that you want to work with initially. Appending allows you to add videos to that particular video. Like for example, when I record with Fraps, it only has a limit of about four gigabytes. Cause like Virtual Dub, well no, Fraps when it records it makes huge files, huge ass files. So like three minutes is like a gigabyte. So if your video goes to like twelve minutes or something, or not even that. If you just happen to have a lot of crap going on in your video, you'll hit the four gigabyte mark pretty fast, and it will break it down into another video. You can actually you can actually combine those two videos using a pen segment. Um, I did this earlier for well this video, but as I said, when I was talking in that video, Cam Studio didn't record my voice, so I'm re-recording this. Um, preview in <laughs> preview input allows you to see the input in the video. By the way, the left pane is what goes into virtual um, virtual dub. The right pane is what goes out. Run preview output from start. Uh, basically, previews output. Preview fillered. Basically, like if you add it fillers, so does it show you what a preview will look like with fillers? Run video analysis pass will basically um, show you how large the video is going to be before you do it, and how large the audio is going to be, how large the video is going to be, and if you're using something like XVID, it's going to show you other things as well. Save as AVI allows Virtual Dub to actually compress it down as AVI. Save old format AVI, save segment AVI. I don't know what to do because I never use them. Close video file, they'll basically close out that video file but won't close out the program. Export allows you to export as um, image sequence stripped master. Striped AVI, Adobe Film Strip, Raw Audio, and Animated GIF. Qbatch allows you to batch videos together and then compress them down at a later date. Like for example, if I jump to job control, it just shows you all the batch videos that I did. And the neat thing about batch compression is you not only get them all done at once, but when it's done, like let's say you're away from the computer, you can actually tell it to hibernate or shut down or sleep or do nothing. But you probably want to do something, obviously. Um, Alright, so that's that for job control. File information shows you the information of the file, of course. Set text information allows you to edit the information in the file. Save AVI allows you to save the AVI, the, the video, well, allows you to save the, um, the audio from the video. Like for example, this is how my videos sound when I initially when I initially record. Like you may notice there's no music in the background. Yes, yeah, enough of that, it's too loud. But there's no music music in the background at all. And I'll get to that in later date, like why I record them like that. Um set frame server, I don't know what that does. Capture AVI. Not exactly sure I know what that does, but I'm pretty sure I have an idea since I'm essentially doing it right now. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, 
run script allows you to run a script like AVI synth. Um, AVI synth is basically allows you to add special effects to your videos, um, similar to Adobe, similar to Adobe effects, or can be if you're really skilled with it. Um, I'm in the process of learning AVI synth for myself, since I'm a computer science major. Programming is sort of a hobby for me, and I try to learn as many languages as possible. And that's one of them. Hopefully I get to touch on it on a later video. And it allows you to do things like um, cut, paste, copy, delete, clear selection, select all, crop to selection, start selection, end selection, mass, so select the frames, so I'm going to select frames and revert all edits. You can also do this just by messing around with the time bar down here. You can basically jump from frame to frame. You can select frames using these. I believe. Well, actually, no, it goes forward and goes backwards in slow motion. Uh, this allows you to go keyframes, allows you to go back to the beginning or always an end if you want. This allows you to play the input, this allows you to play the output. And then move slower and place output because it's in the process of dubbing or basically compressing down. And when you play the output, it simulates how it's going to, well, it's Basically, it's trying to simulate how the video is going to come out when it's dubbed. So, fillers. Fillers are basically the the internal special effects that Virtual Dub comes with. They are very good, to be honest with you. Um, it allows you to do things like add noise, barrel distortion, black box, resizer. Resizer is the only one I really use. Besides some um, brightness and contrast, and I don't really use that one very often, to be honest with you. You can also add um, external filters as well, but you're probably better off just learning the AVI synth and doing that. Uh, you can do certain things with AVI synth that a lot of filters don't give you the option to do, like picture in picture, which I actually did on one of my videos, and I'll show you that like in a later video, hopefully. Okay, you can also like, if you click frame rate, it allows you to adjust the frame rate of the video. It allows you to change the color depth. Compression, if you go down to compression, it allows you to change, allows you to change the codexes. If you download the codexes, codexes for your computer. The way I download multiple codexes for my computer is I actually download something called K, K Lite Mega Codex Pack or K Lite Ultimate Codex Pack, whatever the two. Anyway, it's this thing with a shark on it. Um, I think it's this thing with a shark on it. That might be actually Shark's Codex, which is something different, but... Um, anyway. So you download that. And the codexes I used to use... I used to use DivX, to be honest with you. But... I think I discovered about DivX is it doesn't scale to 1080p and 60 frames per second, which is actually what I rec Well, I record my videos to 60 frames per second while I'm playing the game, so I don't get frame rate lag. Um, I also don't get firmware lag now because I happen to use a computer with two processors in it as opposed to when I start out playing Dungeon Fire, I used to record on a laptop with um, one processor on it and I used to get a lot of frame rate lag. Uh, but I switched over from DivX to XVID because it allows me to compress down videos that were recorded at 60 frames per second at 1080p. Um, if you go into config, I leave my target quantizer at 4. You can go up to 1, but it's just going to leave this huge ass file. For example, the video I recorded and uploaded was which was the all mode run at Nori Fiera and in Dungeon Fighter Online. Um, that was about 4 gigabytes on its own. If I left it at 1, it would have came out 2 gigabytes. And it took about two hours and a, two hours and a half to compress down. But I actually compressed it. I compressed, I compressed that one at three because I want extra quality on it. But I usually compress most of my videos down at four now because it only takes about an hour at the most to compress down, and it comes out looking pretty nice anyway. So four is good. Alright, direct stream, copy. Basically, direct stream, copy, basically, 
doesn't compress down. It makes a direct copy of your your video. Fast recompress basically um, skips a skips um, compression. Well, it compresses it a bit, but not as much as um, full um, processing mode would, or even a normal recompress. I usually leave it at full processing mode because that way you're sure to get the best quality out of it, and your audio is less likely to sink. Well, you're 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 less likely to run into audio syncing issues. You can also put smart friend rendering on or preserve empty frames to basically get the best the best um, quality out of this. But I don't really use smart rendering or preserve empty frames because they come out looking pretty nice anyway. Um, okay. Audio interweaving. If you go to interweaving, you can actually adjust how the sound plays. Like you can have it skip forward a couple of seconds and go back. This is useful in case your audio desyncs. You can actually adjust the track to match the, the sync just perfectly. Um, no audio, you can mute the video. Source audio, that's the audio that the video came with. Audio from another file. Now, I mentioned I was gonna touch upon why I basically record my videos with no music and just the sound effects. That's because usually I dub it over with like music from a different game that I think fits the dungeon or the mood of the video pretty well, or I dub it over with music from artists that you've probably never heard of. Um, when you click on audio from another file, you can choose the file that you want to take audio from, hit open, I just leave it on all detect, constant bitrate and variable bit rates doesn't really I mean, it matters because with variable bitrate, um, as I said, the audio sync is more accurate. But you can just leave it on all detect. To be honest with you, it is much better that way. Um, and just like with video, you can do a direct stream copy or full processing mode. In this case, you want to do. I usually leave it on direct stream copy. I don't put on full processing mode for audio unless you want like the best audio possible which I probably should do because I consider myself an audiophile so I'm being a hypocrite by not putting on full processing mode but I'm just lazy I just want the video to compress as fast as possible it already takes about an hour or something anyway um I am not sure anything does in options because I really don't use it to be honest with you tools hex editor allows you to edit hex Create sparse AVI and expand sparse AVI allows you to complete like AVI files and expand upon them. Benchmark resampler, which is basically like a benchmarking tool. Create pastel, um, pastel AVI and create test video. Same as creating a blank video. And then there's the help um, option. I'm pretty sure you can be familiar with that. It shows you the contents, the license, the change log, the release notes, virtual dub online about virtual dub blah 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 but that's it that's very, pretty much virtual dub in a nutshell it's pretty easy to use and if you learn how to use AVI synths it becomes a really powerful tool almost on par with Adobe After Effects though you really have to be really really geeky in order to basically get the full power out of AVI synths which is basically something I'm going to touch upon later because I'm not even an expert at AVI synths yet. I'm just a novice like everyone, like anyone else approaching that. So I'm trying to learn how to use it myself. But to basically to touch upon what I meant by like being sort of geeky in Norris or learn AVI synths in order to do the same things as um like um Adobe After Effects. Like I don't know. Let's say you want to do like a simple transition and stuff. Like if it's not built into AVI synths, you're gonna have to build. You're gonna have to build a script that does that, and that's gonna include math. Um, which isn't really hard, but you know, you gotta sit down and figure it out. So, but anyway, that's my virtual dub video. This is Vince Omega, and I'm signing off.